Drinker Balisa from BSN 1A and today I'm going to demonstrate about the urinary catheterization. So the equipments that we will be using for the catheter insertions are first catheter of correct size and type of procedure or patient condition, sterile drainage bag, drip, um, sterile gloves, lubricant, antiseptic cleaning solutions such as fluoro, um, chloroflexidine or provodine iodine, then specimen container, pre-filled syringe with sterile water for, for balloon inflation of an indwelling catheterization, sterile drainage tubing and collection bag, um, device to secure catheter, example strap or tape, then extra sterile gloves and catheter, it is um, optional, um, bath blanket, waterproof absorbent pad, clean gloves, additional lighting uh, if needed, then measuring container for the urine. For inserting an indwelling catheter for a male patient, first is to make sure that the patient is in a supine position with only the genitalia being exposed. Then drape the legs to meet tie with a butt blanket or a sheet. After that, we are going to open the stair catheterization, carry on a clean bedside table maintaining asepsis. Then we are going to put the stair gloves. After putting our gloves, place the fenestrated drape over the patient's genitalia. Place the sterile catheterization tray between the patient's leg on the sterile drape. Okay, we have here, then it's here between the patient's leg. Then open the cleansing solution and pour over half of the sterile cotton balls or open antimicrobial swabs. Open the sterile specimen container. Do not test. Um, let's do not test inflate the balloon. Okay. Then, using our sterile hand, place the distal catheter uh, and into the sterile basin. If catheter is pre-attached to the sterile tubing and drainage container, um, let's position the catheter and set up with easy reach on sterile field. Syringe is pre-filled with sterile water and squirt onto sterile field. With our non-dominant hand, we are going to hold on the penis at 90 degrees angle to the body. If the patient is not circumcised, what we are going to do is to pull back the foreskin with, with, with this hand to visualize the uteral meatus. Then after that, we are going to use the sterile hand to pick up the cleansing solution, either antimicrobial swabs or soap cotton balls using the sterile forceps. Then we are going to clean the urina urinary meatus with one downward stroke using a circular motion. Do this for three times. And after that, we are going to get a dry cotton to dry it. Next, we are going to hold the pen slice slightly toward upward tension and perpendicular to the patient's body. Then, lubricate the catheter well with the lubricant or um, the lyco ly lidocaine. Then, for the patients um, needing extra lubrication, what we are going to do is to lubricate or lubricant can be injected um, directly to the penis. Then, gently insert the catheter into the urethra approximately 8 inches until urine begins to drain. So, this is lubricated already. Then, when we are going to do this, we should not force it if we feel that um, feel resistance from the patients or if the patients complain um, for pains. Then, ask the client to take a deep breath to promote relaxation. Okay, sir, just um, um, take a deep breath for your relaxation. Then, insert catheter in addition. Now, 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters. Then, after that, we are going to um, inflate the balloon with a of uh, the pre-filled syringe. The 
then after that is we are going to um, check for the placement by gently pulling the pulling on the catheter. Then that's where, what we are going to do is to connect the distal end of the catheter to the drainage back if necessary. So we already done it. Then secure the catheter tubing to the patient's thigh or abdomen using a, a Velcro leg strap or other um, securement device. Then leave some slack in the catheter tubing to allow for movement. Okay, secure the tubing to the client. Abdomen, okay. And after that, we are going to um in the circumcised circumcised male, um gently replace the foreskin over the gland. Okay, what we are going to do is to attach the drainage bag to the bed frame, calling tubing to ensure that the tubing does not fall into the dependent loops. After that, we are going to discard the gloves and let's perform hand hygiene. After that, we are going to record the time of the completion of the procedure, the size of the catheter, um, amount of and color of the urine of the patient, and um, lastly, if there is any adverse patient's response. For the catheter removal, the equipment that we will be using are clean gloves if needed for care and uh, removal, waterproof pad, bath blanket, 10 ml of or larger syringe without needle, then we already um, we also need washcloth and warm water to perform perennial care after the removal and available urine for male patients, bedside um, commode or urine output commode pan for female patients for urine collection after the catheter is removed. For the catheter removal, first we are going to follow the steps 1 through 5. Then next we are going to position the patient as the catheter insertion like we did a while ago. Then we are going to drip the patient so that um, um, only the area around the catheter is exposed. Okay, then place a waterproof pad under the female patient's leg or since this is a male patient, we're going to put it over the, the male patient thigh. Then plumb the catheter, optional. Okay, we already put um, waterproof pad over the patient thigh. Then we're going to remove the um, securement device just to secure the catheter. So we're going to remove it because it is used a while ago to secure the catheter tubing. And then after that, we are going to insert half of syringe into the balloon inflation tube of the catheter and allow syringe to fill with liquid from the balloon. So um, I know the amount of liquid we, the prefilled liquid we um, inserted to the balloon. So we should um, remember that to make sure that everything or the liquid are being released from it, okay? Then we are not going to pull on syringe to withdraw liquid, okay? Then the size of balloon is indicated on the catheter. Most commonly, sizes, sizes smaller than 10 ml are used. Then larger balloons or 30 ml, then it may be used after prostatic or urologic surgery. Slowly. Place it here. And after that, we are going to ask the patient to breathe in and out. Dipti. Okay, sir, I want you to breathe in and out. Dipti. Um, I'm just going to um, pinch the catheter and remove it slowly. And gently ask the patient to exhale. Okay, sir, just exhale. I'm just going to remove it slowly. Okay. Okay. Exhale. Then we are going to place this on a waterproof pad. So we have here waterproof pad. So we are already done removing the catheter from our male patient. After that, we are going to um, assist patient to cleanse and dry his genitals. Then, okay, sir, I'm just going to assist you to dry your genitals. Okay. Then after that, we are going to remove and dispose the used equipment, then remove our gloves. Then we are going to assist the patient to a comfortable position. If you say you're already in your comfortable position, I'm just going to place the gown over you and to cover um, the patient with body linen. So, okay, sir. And after that, we are going to put on clean gloves again.
So after this, we are going to remove and dispose the used equipment according to the agency policy. Then we are going to measure and document urine in the drainage bag and time catheter removal. We are going to estimate when the patient should void so it is within 8 hours. Because sometimes if it is um, more than the 8 hours, it can cause, um, it is not good for the patient's body. Then we are going to, okay, measure. And after that, we are going to remove gloves and let's perform hand hygiene. We're going to document the time of the catheter removal, um, time patient should void, and, and any adverse signs of symptoms or symptoms.